Hello YouTube, welcome to my first tutorial video. Today I am going to show you a program called AnyRail. The current version is 5.5.4 and can be downloaded from the AnyRail website. There is a link in the description below to their site. So let's get started. First I am going to open up AnyRail by double clicking the icon on the desktop. Next I am going to set the layout size on the settings tab. Measurements are by default done in centimetres. I find it helpful to apply a grid to the layout area. This is again done on the settings tab. You can set the size of each square by altering the figure below the grid tick box as demonstrated. Now that that's done, it's now time to add some track. This is done by clicking on the Track Libraries tab and using the drop down menus for each track gauge. As my layout is double O, I will be selecting the Hornby Track Library as shown. Adding track to the layout is as simple as clicking on a section in the library then moving it around the layout. When two pieces of track are joined, a white circle appears to indicate the join. As you will notice, when a piece of track is disconnected, the white circle disappears. If you decide that you want a point to be facing the other way, i.e. you want a right hand point to be a left hand point, you can right click it and select flip. However, whilst the point is connected to the rest of the track, it will flip all of your track. So if you only want to flip one, pe one point, you will need to do use the disconnect feature and then select flip. You can also rotate track just as easily. There are two ways to do this. You can either right click the piece of track you want to rotate and then input the degrees that you want to rotate by. Again, when the track is connected, it will rotate all of the track. So again, you'll need to use the disconnect feature to rotate just one piece of track. You can also, as you can see, use the green circle. You click on it and then move your mouse left or right to rotate the track. However, this isn't as accurate as inputting the degrees that you want to use. Objects such as platform sections are added in a similar way to the track. You click on the Object Libraries tab at the top move to the manufacturer of the object you want to input, select it, select the library and then click on the object to put it on the layout. Move it around the layout and again objects that you put in and connect up will have a white dot to show their join. AnyRail gives you the option to save or export your layout. Saving will create a file that can only be opened in AnyRail. You click on the disk at the top type in the file name you want to use and click save. However, the export option allows you to save as an image file, collard a file for use in 3D rendering software or a trained player XML file. To save as an image you'll go to file, export as, click on picture I tend to use the settings that are already as default and click OK. Again input your file name and then you've got the choice of either JPEG, GIF, BMP or PNG. I'm going to leave it as JPEG for now and then click Save. The printing function in AnyRail allows you to print your layout to a certain scale or in AnyRail they use the word ratio. the moment you can see it's set to portrait I'm going to change this to landscape and then change the ratio to 1 to 12. 
this way the, my layout fits onto the page which makes saves paper the ratio also helps when com when it comes to building your main layout because every square then represents a certain measurement and you can then transport that onto your main layout by gri creating the same size grid I hope this tutorial has been helpful and thank you for watching if you have any questions please leave any comments below